This photo shows a stage series of a performance entitled Ocean by the New York Merch Cunningham Dance Company. This is a posthumous work of the music director of the company, John Cage, a collaborator and old friend. You can see instrumental players, 118 musicians sitting in a circle surrounding the dancing stage and the audience. I served as an orchestra director in the first performance of this ocean. I've been working as a composer, as an orchestra opera conductor for the last 35 years. My current laboratory started in the year 1999. Since then, concurrent with my own music activities, my lab has focused on the ethics of media and information uh, based on the both uh, natural and the social sciences and humanities. By the way, this lecture is for the New York University GovLab and supported by Munich Technical University and the University of Tokyo. And 31 years ago, I should study orchestra conducting at the Leonard Bernstein in the same New York City. But all of a sudden, Maestro Lenny had passed away. And finally, finally, I stayed Tokyo, continued PhD candidate studies in physics, got music prizes with the judgment of only due to you, George Ligeti, Luciano Berio, and worked uh, internationally as composer and conductor simultaneously. Then, a new wind blew in the year 1995, meeting with a French composer conductor, Pierre Boulez. I applied methods of physics to solve classical problems of music, most of which was proposed by Arnold Schoenberg, the composer, music theorist, and reformulated by Olivier Mission, Pierre Boulez himself, Luigi Nono, Karl-Heinz Stockhausen, and many other musicians. Then, I got PhD and appointed a professor of composition and conducting at the University of Tokyo in the year 1999. My collaboration with the New York Merch Scanning and Dance Company, John Cage's posthumous work Ocean, was also during that period. After that, I had organized conducting method with P.L. Bullis, on which I'd explain soon. I also collaborated with the Bayreuth of Spielhaus, conducted music dramas of Richard Wagner. Just following the original stage setting and the motion captions, which have the most important three dimensional characteristics, and evaluated the space time physio cognitive acoustics by use of interferometric correlation analysis, I prepared, on which I'll also explain soon. During the 1930s and 40s, Wagner's music and the Bayreuth had used for the propaganda of Nazi Germany. Then, after the Second World War, the most severe ethical reflection was demanded, and they had a direct relationship with the current AI ethical problematics. My first collaboration with the Munich Technical University was on the ethics of public propaganda and media mind control. My best friend Christoph Lütke had proposed an important philosophical concept, the Snotung Principle, the Notung Principle. Based on the Richard Wagner's work, the name of the sacred sword, Notung, in the music drama, The Ring of the Nibelung. Thus, our research lab had focused on the fundamental study of music, expression, and their ethics, in parallel with a practical music making, and also with a background of physical and information sciences, ethical studies, highly organized autonomous system, self-driving car, and ethics of AIs from the common deep root. You may wonder what kind of relationship there are between Nazi Holocaust and uh, AI ethics, but indeed, you'll see, there are a vast amount of fundamental links between those two and more. On April 2021, an Irish digital artist is condemned severely by putting colors and even a smile on the Cambodian victims of Khmer Rouge. This is from the artist's homepage. With contemporary AI technology, such minor changes are quite easy and there is no technical, no technical problems. Where there are innumerable numbers of ethical problems around such AI faking of personal faces, voices or actions 
artificially added against his, her, or their believed families, relatives, or friends' will. This is also from the artist's homepage, Colored Death Mask of Ludwig van Beethoven. How do you feel about this? Shall Ludwig open his eyes with the aid of AI image processing? It's not at all easy to obtain a simple answer, but it's technically very, very, very easy to manipulate documents in such a manner. To any death mask, and if any dead face or dead body. Then, how about the victims of the Holocaust lost their lives in the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp? Once again, how do you think ethically? To put colors, emotions, or even smiles to any historical documents? All the facts, like this famous photo. Such manipulation is called a deep fake, and deep faking on individual face, personal voice, action, and any other document should be ethically throughout strictly discussed and operated. But indeed, until now, we the human beings have no high round table of morality to deal with such problem. The Global AI Ethics Consortium should play a proper role for the common benefit and future of all the human beings and our digitalized world. Now, let's go back to focus on the viewpoint of the 20th century American artist, John Cage, who was also deeply influenced by Zen Buddhism. John's idea of uncertainty means chance, was little intention of particular individual. Similar to the case of Steve Jobs, John Cage was influenced by the Zen thoughts introduced by Japanese Zen philosopher Daisetsu Suzuki from 1870 to 1966. In John's well-known piano piece, 4 minutes 33 seconds, a pianist is just sitting in front of his piano without playing the keyboards, and he simply listens to the silence in the concert hall. The point of this piece is that if the pianist's arbitrariness is made least or made a zero, to what would we listen? This is a simple application of Zen Buddhism's right mindfulness in the Eightfold Ways to Music Listening. And the idea of 4 minutes 33 seconds means 273 seconds. And this number of 273 is based on the idea of thermodynamic absolute zero which is minus uh, 273 degrees Celsius. Jean always liked uh, joking and uh, this article shows an example of it. While being called uh, with the same word uncertainty, when Heisenberg's idea of uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics is totally different from John's uncertainty. Quantum mechanical uncertainty principle tells when measuring the velocity of a wave, the location can be specified to a certain point, and when specifying the location of the wave, velocity of the wave can be measured clearly. As Heisenberg's inequality doesn't contain temperature t, this also explains a fluctuation of the wave function at the absolute zero degree. Jones' chance and Heisenberg's uncertainty is completely different still, thinking of the AI problems. I noticed that uh, these two indeterminacies are strangely related at some zero degree point. While Cage's chance means avoidance of subjective arbitrariness, Heisenberg only tells the mathematical relation of physical phenomena. But in AI, even subjective prejudice or erratum would form a dataset, and its algorithmic structure is calculated. Even a uh, subjective arbitrariness is recorded as physically fixed dataset. Here, I'd like to put a name of researcher in the field of a mathematical probability, Andrei Kolmogorov. The fundamental problems of AI always fluctuate between objective mathematical structure and subjective preference or prejudice. In the latter part of this talk, I'd like to think over the zero degree of prejudice once again. Now I want to introduce another musician who thinks his problem is free will and uncertainty thoroughly with me. He's a French composer conductor, Pierre Boulez. Pierre Boulez and I developed a method of conducting wizard figure together. 
which is known as spectral conducting. When we met for the first time in 1995, as a musician who had also studied mathematics, Boulez was hoping to remove any unnecessary arbitrary gesture of conducting. Nine years later, after an experience of a medical autopsy and application of digital markless motion capture system, I noticed simple principle of corporal technique and uh, we synthesized so-called angular dynamical method of conducting with any ambiguous figures. Unfortunately, Pierre passed away in uh, 2016. After his passing, I was invited to his ILCOM, French National Institute for the Research and Coordination in Acoustic Music, which Boulez has established, and I gave my lecture on the Angular Dynamics, which we too established together. Thereafter, Kazuki Otsuka, uh, Mitsuharu Ishikawa, and I applied the machine language system to motion data Pil Boulez had left, and we extracted tangibly the rhythm and the articulation Peel considered in his mind during the performance posthumously. With the appropriate emotion that left even after his lifetime, AI can extract historical master's musical mind and even unconsciousness during the performance. And of course, the similar analysis is applicable to living musicians, not only the conductors, but also the instrumental players. I can even extract one's unconscious habit in a performing, and it can objectify such an unconscious habit as physical motion data. We can apply this ability to improve performing style as well as to invent a new technique of rendering, for example, to play incredibly fast or extremely correct, and even to prevent potential diseases. Moreover, this practice is also deeply related to physical and mental relaxation of the players with the most careful listening. And the practice is almost the same with the right mindfulness in Zen Buddhism. Relaxation, careful listening to the world, and a simple and a correct performance. During the COVID-19 pandemic, our Tokyo Orchestra Mozart players, rehearsals and performances also have a meaning of music Zen practice, even for the mental health and the stress reduction of the young musicians. <laughs>